So in this video, uh, I want to introduce the chip tester professional. It, it's a chip tester I came across uh, recently. So I've been needing a 16K, 64K, T56K DRAM tester for some time. I've got a large amount in, in my stock. All of it, almost all of it is reclaim. Thank you, dog, dog door. Uh, and I just don't know the status of them all. I've also got a few systems uh, with various DRAMs in them I'd like to be able to test as well. And I looked at a number of, of DRAM specific testers uh, and just didn't find anything that I thought would meet my needs. And on a forum post someplace, I saw this chip tester professional mentioned uh, and went, wow, that looks really interesting. Uh, if you go to vintagecomputerstuff.de, so vintagecomputerstuff.de, you will find this post uh, talking about it. So I have ordered the PC board uh, from the gentleman in Germany. It's already got the processor uh, attached to it and programmed, so I just really need to stuff all the other components. Uh, it took m uh, an order from DigiKey here in the U.S. and from James Co., or Jameco to get all the parts. Uh, a little bit about the architecture. There's a plug on board here that I believe this one's doing a boost converter. Maybe, maybe not. I don't see an inductor. Uh, it uses a, a four line by 20 character LCD or LCD display output. There's three switches down here you use to control the system. There's a large number of parts this can test. Lots of DRAM, lots of SRAM, logic, just all kinds of stuff is testable. Uh, it uses a, a zero insertion force socket that supports both 300 and 600 mil parts. Uh, that's important if you decide to build one of these. You get a socket that can support 300 mil parts as well as 600. If you just put in one that only supports 600 mil, you can't test DRAMs, you can't test logic, etc. So this is kind of an introduction to that. So I thought we'd just kind of take a quick look through the web page here together, and then in future videos we'll look at my board and the components are ordered, etc. So as it sits here, it started as a pure DRAM SRAM tester, and it's matured into an almost everything tester, and that seems to be true looking at the supported components. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> you can also add additional components to the system. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but it looks like using text files maybe, I'm not 100% sure. But there is a way to do that. It's actively being developed on. I got an email a couple days ago that there's a new version of the firmware available. Uh, I may have to pick up the appropriate programmer to be able to program on board. Uh, one of my existing programmers might actually support it, I haven't looked yet. Uh, it looks like a really cool little kit. Yeah, it uses a, an 18 mega. I ordered the board you know, with the 18 mega pre-installed. Uh, there's a mix of 1% resistors. Uh, you know, the, the LCD is ubiquitous. Uh, I picked up the SD card as well, so I can, I believe, write results to it, etc. Say, so in this case, this is old firmware is already programmed. There's a fair amount of stuff here. Yeah, there's the, the Diamex programmer used to update the firmware. I guess I suspect I can do it with one of my other programmers. I just haven't looked. So it, it looks like a really usable little design. Uh, they've got it mounted apparently in a gun case here, I believe, actually, which is kind of cool. Uh, So that really is all that's on this article here. Uh, everything that I need to worry about soldering is through hole, I believe, except potentially for the USB connector right here would be a surface mount. I think everything else is through hole. There's a barrel connector here if you want to power it from a, a you know, a wall wart. There's a 7805 regulator that can be installed on the primary PC board underneath. You know, it's hidden by the, this extension board here. Uh, component sourcing was interesting here in 2021 due to shortages uh, and obsolete parts. I had problems finding a particular MOSFET that it uses, although didn't find them on DigiKey, just out of stock. But I did find a stock of them at Jameco here in the U.S. So if anybody's building one of these and is struggling to find that MOSFET, Jameco here in the U.S. might be able to help you out. And worst case is I bought 10 of the MOSFETs. I always buy additional 
and if somebody's desperate for one I may be able to supply one you can contact me down in the comments uh, there's a set of 5.1 volt zeners sitting here and here so that way if a part uses 12 volts and outputs 12 volts the zener will clamp that output to 5 volts so we don't blow the 18 mega up uh, there's some relays here to do switching of power rails around driving logic to drive various pins it, it looks pretty complete and it looks like as it says it can test uh, retro chips I mean you know, you, you know the, the retro chip tester professional notice the word retro there it really is designed in many ways to deal with all the vintage computers I deal with uh, PC board wasn't horribly expensive especially with AT mega pre-installed and programmed uh, I think all of the components that I had to order ran me 60 or 70 US dollars uh, I already had the ZIF socket uh, some of the stuff I already had in stock uh, I did order a brand new fresh LCD myself uh, it turns out it came with an SPI adapter soldered onto it I thought that wouldn't be soldered on long. I'll have to remove it to use the display I also have a 4 line by 20 character vacuum fluorescent display module it should be drop in compatible here and that's probably what I'll end up using in the end just because it looks so friggin awesome uh, you know what else to say here uh, there's a row of shop key dials here uh, there's a few substitutions that are allowed there's documentation that covers that uh, I guess while we're talking let's dive into a more detailed description Since this is meant to be over on the 8bitmuseum.de site kind of gets into some of the stuff it can test here uh, we may actually go look at the yeah, we'll, we'll look through this. We'll spend the time. This is meant to be in an introduction uh, overview of supported DRAM. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Actually, it wants to download it, which we may go ahead and do. It's like, so you can come to the site yourself uh, and take a look. Uh, so here, here's an SRAM list of potential, you know, of SRAMs that can be tested. And there's stuff here I've never heard of. It, it supports Russian. TTL logic, and like in this case, it's a Russian SRAM apparently. Uh, you'll notice the size of these four by four bits. You know, it's a 16 bit RAM for something very tiny like a register. Uh, you know, some very small RAMs here, and finally you move up to you know one K by one. I have some of these kind of things in my stock that have just come from you know various systems. Uh, I definitely have 2102s, 2114s, 2148s, 2149s. I want to test, uh, I think I've got some 6550s. A lot of the numbers here I recognize. It'll be nice to actually test them. Uh, you know, and pin compatible DRAMs. Here we go. So, again, you know, pretty cool. Uh, 1K by 1 DRAM, yes, they existed. You know, uh, you know, it's a nice little solid list. Notice again, there's a Russian part, Russian part. It can deal with uh, SIM30 and SIP30. There's a couple of adapter PC boards you can build up to do that. Uh, this is not an open source project. You can't have the main PC board manufactured yourself. You have to order it. But the uh, adapter boards are open source, uh, open hardware, and you can have those, you know, manufactured yourself. Uh, you know, uh, here's kind of a description of that and the adapter board uh, for dealing with bipolar RAMs, zip where the pins are offset in that weird pattern. You know, lots of little adapter boards. I will be building one of these up, as you may or may not know. I deal with 1702s in some of my vintage systems. And it would be nice to have another system to read them. Uh, I've been only, and you can read the contents as I remember and write it to the SD card. I have used my Altair 8800 as my read system. Uh, to read the contents out of 1702s and write it as hex files, you know, in a basic program, and then I offload that hex file to my, you know, primary PC to edit. So this would be, might be a, an easier way. Uh, 
I'm not sure how the minus nine gets uh, developed. You know, where the minus nine comes from, maybe it requires an external minus 12 volt supply. I haven't read up on this. Uh, EPROMs, some really old ones, 2513s. Anna, shush. Anna. 2513s, which I believe were the character generators, Apple II maybe, and a couple other machines. Uh, an experimental adapter, EPROMs and PROMs that are supported, lots of 7400 series, logic I mean lots of, you know, pretty cool, uh, 4000 series, uh, CMOS, some of the really old MOS, uh, I, are these, I don't remember, don't recognize the parts. I don't think they're DTL logic. I don't think they are. I don't think they're that old. But the Russian stuff, I've actually wanted to order some of this since there's so much surplus just to play with. It'd be interesting to build a, you know, a Z80 based single board computer based on all Russian components, including a Russian manufactured Z80. Uh, the, yeah, this is, I, I think some of these are, I want to say Motorola parts and other parts that didn't follow the 7400 series naming standard in originally anyhow I'm gonna wrap this up as an introduction really to what we're gonna do over the next few videos we'll be assembling the unit uh, testing the unit etc and and see what I think I'm guessing I'm gonna really enjoy this uh, so with all that said I guess we'll wrap this one up here and I'll see you in a future video